Hello, I'm Regina McCann Hess, president of Forge Wealth Management, and welcome to our Women in Wealth series. Today, we have a new guest, my friend, Susan. And Susan, can you tell us who you are, what you do, and what you love about what you do? Thank you, Regina. And thank you for inviting me to do this uh, Zoom call. Um, my name is Susan Nolan. I'm a nurse, a registered nurse, and I started my own company as a patient advocate. Um, you know, as a person, I, uh, I love to learn, I love to figure out problems and it fit into the nursing role quite nicely. Um, so as a, a, a nurse, I started out at, um, at the bedside and I help, you know, patients uh, get better and transition to home or to a higher level of care. And then I worked my way up after getting my bachelor's degree into a management program uh, or management role. And um, in that role, I was in charge of making sure that patients were getting their services. So uh, I had uh, different types of disciplines report to me, physical therapy, occupational, speech, social work, home health aides, nurses. So I got to work with an interdisciplinary care team to work and make patients um, get better or have a better experience with their healthcare. Um, after that, I, I went back to school and got my master's degree and then moved into a director of nursing, director of clinical service role. And in that role, besides doing everything that the management role did, I also was in charge of the regulatory um, uh, rules and regulations and um, you know, insurance and budget and, uh, you know, all those great uh, revenue streams that we needed to do. But my, my, my passion was um, helping people get what they needed. And um, with everything that I did in my role, the, the best thing that I liked was working uh, to help people get what they needed. And, and it just was so satisfying. Uh, what I found throughout those years was that many people were sort of like alone in their um, navigation of this, you know, either they didn't have family nearby, didn't have family, or the family and the patient were totally lost. So um, it, it just came uh, natural to me to uh, take that next step and start my own business to help people. So that's how I started uh, my business. Wow. And that's amazing. Well, first of all, thank you for uh, being one of the many, many people out in the healthcare world who are helping everyone, uh, especially you. now you guys are finally recognized for all the work that you do yes. on a daily basis mm -hmm. all the time, yeah. <laughs> all the time, <laughs> yeah. crazy hours. Like when I'm sleeping, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I know we've all as a nurse, uh, I'm mm -hmm. also a former nurse. Mm -hmm. uh, we've all had our share of night shifts because mm -hmm. people are sick at night too. Yeah. So yes. doing that. <clears throat> yes. So I love what you're doing and, and especially now with helping people navigate the healthcare system. Mm -hmm. So tell us on that side of uh, the job, what are you doing now for, for some of the people in this role, helping them navigate the healthcare system? So um, some of the, the things that I, I help people with is um, say that they've just been uh, diagnosed with a, a disease and they're not, not sure what's gonna happen. Um, as their advocate, I can find out exactly what it is that they're dealing with, uh, investigate research and give them that information on the disease itself, um, uh, the medications, the treatments, so that they're educated. Um, I also support them with that journey. Mm -hmm. uh, so if they have to go to the doctors, um, I can go with them and be their support person. Um, I'm sure we've all come across, a, you know, a, a grandmother or a mother who said, I'm not going to do that, you know. So I'm that person that either stands by them and says, well, here's the information, you know, uh, and break it down for them so that they can understand it. I think that is the biggest um, something that I really like to do. I like to have them understand exactly what's going on because when they're in the doctor's office, many times uh, it's too overwhelming. So with that, I also work with them to, to put some strategies in place. Like, how are we going to handle this? How, how do you want to handle this mm -hmm. and um, be their support person? So for example, I had a, one client 
that uh, was having cataracts removed. And he wanted, um, you know, he, he was afraid. He didn't know, but he did want to make sure he got the right lens implanted. So I researched the different lenses and we talked about them and he wanted this particular one. So I went with it to the ophthalmologist with him and we uh, discussed that uh, lens that he would like to have. And what was, was really interesting is that the, uh, the doctor then went and researched it as well, came back and that's what he got. So I accompanied him there. Before we went, I gave him the information and I gave him some suggested questions to ask. And then he added his own. Um, Bravo. So, I, Bravo. <laughs> so the, the, it, it made the visit go quicker. It made him feel more empowered and everything went very smoothly. That is amazing. Such mm -hmm. a great story. Such a great way to show people what you can do for them. Thank you. I, I know like your role is so needed in, in the world because if you, if you go into the hospital and you don't have a healthcare background or somebody close in your family that has a healthcare background, you're, you're in a different world. You don't know mm -hmm. how to navigate it. It's, it's overwhelming. And like you said, people go into these uh, doctor's visits and they don't ask the questions they should. They just mm -hmm. are like, okay, all right. Like a deer in headlights, right? Yes, yes. So uh, a personal story would be my own father-in-law when he was diagnosed with lung cancer many years ago. Um, you know, he took, he went to the first appointment and the guy was like, oh, well, you know, we're just going to do radiation and that's the end of it. And I was just like, and I had already researched what type of lung cancer he had. And I'm like, radiation, that's, you know, that the research doesn't say that. I'm like, no, 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 no. You need a second opinion. Let's go, you know, and I did put out my feelers and I, I made some phone calls. I'm like, who's the right, you know, person for this type of cancer. And we got him to the right place. And, you know, we asked, I asked questions because he just, you know, he was like, he didn't know what to ask. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and then I educated him. And the, the outcome was completely different, mm -hmm. I think, what, what would have been had he gone down the first route mm -hmm. and because he didn't ask questions and he didn't know how to navigate. He didn't mm -hmm. know how to ask those types of questions or even what questions to ask. Yeah, so somebody like you helping people is going to completely change their experience and possibly their outcome. I believe so. Um, you know, uh, throughout my career in nursing, I've seen a big change in the healthcare system mm -hmm. and it's become big business. Yes, it has. Um, yes. So, and, and being uh, in the director role, I knew, I knew how that worked. I knew we needed to make so much money. I needed so many patients. We needed to make sure everything was click in the boxes so that Medicare would uh, reimburse us and certify us. So um, understanding that then you can say, you can ask those right questions. Like, do we really need to do this? Like, is there an alternative? Um, you know, most doctors are very compassionate and they want to do the best for their patients, but it has gotten to where the doctors have even gotten frustrated because the system is um, uh, forcing them to use, you know, the medical record and they have to put this in and put that in and so that they get paid. So I, I think someone needs to be on the side of the patient. <laughs> right, right. I, and I, I remember a perfect example of that was, um, you know, I have, I have migraine headaches, right? So I see uh, a neurologist and good old fashioned doctor, right? He would come in, he would talk to me, you know, take the blood pressure, talk, like literally just talk to me. Mm -hmm. And then over time, it evolved to, he came in and he had to look at his iPad because they were forcing him to check boxes on this iPad. And I was just Absolutely. like, yeah. where's yeah. the, you know, like it, it was a total disconnect for me, mm -hmm. knowing how he, he was so amazing. And then you could even see the frustration in his face. He was yes. like, I hate, you know, his face said, said it all. He's like, I hate this. You know, yes. I want to, I want to be a doctor. I don't want right. to get my iPad. And, and I've implemented some of those uh, electronic medical records into, into our health system. And the doctors really were, um, they really did not like it because yeah. they felt that they could not give that face to face, um, you know, so 
Yeah, it's um, tough. Another part of it is the insurance as well. Mm. Insurance drives a lot of how the care is done. So the doctor will say, well, let's see, I'm, I'd like to give you this medication, but your insurance doesn't pay for it. True. Or you can have this treatment, but it's going to cost you an additional, you know, so many dollars. So as an advocate, I would help guide them through that, you mm -hmm. know, to make sure that, you know, hey, if you need this procedure, let's make sure at this facility, your it will cover your insurance, your insurance will cover it, or it will be a less of out-of-pocket expense. Yeah, for sure, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, how have you had to pivot with the pandemic to help your clients? Well, you know, <laughs> I, know. I, started, I started my business last year, um, didn't realize the pandemic would be coming along. <laughs> <laughs> oh, timing, uh, timing is and, everything. Yes. And, um, but you know, uh, what I do is I do a lot of, uh, zoom, uh, you know, remote, re right. remote, uh, interaction with my clients. And, uh, I have gone on, you know, uh, physician visits, uh, of course we're, you know, uh, geared up with our masks. Um, you know, I'd wear a very good one in N95, but, um, you know, just taking all the precautions. Um, I can't get out and market to people face to face, which I really like to do because I, I really like to be, I, I like that personal touch. Um, oh, we're all missing that personal touch right yes, now. Yes, really. Oh, and I, yeah, I need, I, I need human contact. Yes. <laughs> I'm a hugger. I you hug know. everybody. <laughs> I keep telling my clients at this point, because we're on so many, I don't even know how many Zoom appointments we've done at this point, but I tell them, you know, that's like three or four hugs you owe me, my. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> we have a hug bank right now. <laughs> but so I'm using social media, just as you are, and, um, you know, to get the word out there. And, uh, you know, I have a website and I'm on Instagram, Facebook. Uh, what else am I on? I wrote it down. LinkedIn. <laughs> I know you, can't, you lose track of all the, yeah. <laughs> Well, it's kind of th that kind of um, interaction is new to me to mm -hmm. uh, to people who have grown into it, um, you know, and I think it's a great way to get the word out there. Um, so, you know, but it's it's still uh, uh, I, I like technology. Yeah, so. <laughs> you got to You got to be you got to be on the socials. Absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah. that's, that's basically what I've been doing. Good, good. Now, uh, I know healthcare is predominantly a female um, profession, but what are some of the challenges that you have faced as a professional woman? Hmm, some of the challenges I faced as a professional woman. Hmm, I think in my career um, and moving up the ladder, um, I had to um, I had to make some tough decisions and. Uh, many times they were not received well, um, but they needed to be done. Um, yeah. You know, um, patient needs care. We need yeah. to get out there. Um, I did, uh, my background is uh, a lot of home care. I did home field nursing and then I, you know, I ran a home care company. Um, so many times saying, you know, you, you have to go back and take care of this patient. So uh, in my career, some of the challenges were, you know, the, the pushback uh, on trying to get patient access to care. And that could be either uh, nurses, therapists, um, you know, uh, home health aides. Uh, so, you know, uh, not only that, but in the insurance company mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, um, mm -hmm. many times we would say, what, what are we going to do? The insurance company is not paying for this. Um, so we would take a step back and say, if we did not have to worry about anything, what would be the right thing to do? So um, some of the challenges were that, you know, hey, maybe we have to give some free care just to make sure this patient is safe or that they, they got what they needed. And once you approach it that way, the challenge becomes a little less. Oh, that's really cool. I like how you, yeah. I like how you worded that. That's pretty cool. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, there's so much compassion in a nurse, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. No matter what, um, I guess what, what stage of nursing you're in, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's always that compassion part where you yeah. have to find the way to take care of the patient. You just have to. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I like that. I like yeah. That. It's hard to look into somebody's eyes and tell them no. 
It yeah. really, yeah. really is. Yeah. yeah and the insurance companies and the doctors kind of <laughs> don't like to do that. So, you know, kind of fold on the nerves many times. Oh, of course. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So, um, so I know you are building this business, um, mm -hmm. but let's fast forward however many years. Oh, okay. What is your retirement vision? Well, I have, my husband and I own an RV mm -hmm. and our, we, we're not going anywhere right now because of the pandemic. Although yeah, I've been tempted just to mm -hmm. jump in and take off. So. Uh, <laughs> But I think uh, when I re when I plan to retire, I would like to travel, um, you know, to see some of the sites of, of our great country. You know, uh, everybody likes to go to the Grand Canyon. That's somewhere I'd like to see as well. Uh, we just have a beautiful country and I love to, to travel around. Um, eventually, when I when I do retire, maybe pass this business on to my granddaughters. You know, I have several <laughs> and, uh, you know, I've been. Um, uh, introducing them to uh, the business aspect of, uh, you know, nursing and advocacy. And uh, they love it. They put the stickers on the envelopes for me and things like that. So that's great. Yeah, that is great. Yeah. Hey, whatever it takes to get them in interested mm -hmm. and included and a sense of accomplishment, you know, that that kind of thing. And that draws them into, Ooh, let me see if this is something I'd like to do for mm -hmm. my career. Yes. Yeah. That's really cool. Good for you. You're, you're yeah. having a good time with those kids. I, I am. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, I, I don't want to say it's cheap labor. <laughs> <laughs> I have a little bit of that too here. My, my 16 year old son helps me, um, with the videos that we're doing right now. Oh, how nice. Yeah. He helps edit them and package them and get them ready to, for compliance. So yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. It's good. Awesome. It's good. I, I mean, I think that that's, um, how, you know, when you're 14, 15 you, or 16, sometimes you just cannot find a, a, a job. So this is a great way to uh, get some experience mm -hmm. and also put a few bucks in your pocket. Yeah. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's really good. He's really good, mm -hmm. but that's awesome. Um, so if someone was in a situation where they, you know, need help advocating an advocate for the healthcare system or navigating the healthcare system, mm -hmm. how would they find you? Well, I have a website called discoverhealthadvocacy.com, all one word. Um, I'm also on LinkedIn and LinkedIn, and I wrote these down. Uh, LinkedIn is linkedin.com slash uh, discover.health. Okay. I'm also on Twitter, twitter.com discoverhealth2. Um, Instagram.com discoverhealthadvocacy and facebook.com discover health advocacy. Oh, wow. Um, okay. I also have the old fashioned phone number. <laughs> what? What's the phone number? Tell us the phone number. It actually talks 856-571-8547. I am in New Jersey. I service New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Delaware. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. I'm not afraid to travel. Old home care nurse. So getting in the car and, and going into a different direction is, is, I have no fear. <laughs> yeah, and I, that is one of the things that we are really blessed with in our area. We have a plethora of hospitals to choose from and some amazing healthcare systems. Absolutely. I mean, you know, it's like, oh, let's see, do I want to go to mm -hmm. Jefferson or <laughs> Hospital University of Pennsylvania? Boy, that's a tough, it is really a tough decision because yes. there's so amazing. Like they both yes. have so much research and so many good doctors and nurses and physical therapists and mm -hmm. all the ultrasound techs, everybody. It's just amazing. Versus, yes. you know, if you're in the middle of the country, you may have to drive an hour mm -hmm. to find the nearest hospital. Oh, yes. It may not have the same quality that we have in our backyard. Absolutely. I mean, I know there's like five major hospitals within yeah. a 25 mile radius. Yeah. Well, I'm an alumni of Jefferson. So, you know, oh, I, have a that's a great, <laughs> I worked there at one time as a staff nurse. <laughs> uh, it is a great place. And I have to tell you that, that, uh, you know, our institutions have many, many great doctors that are doing wonderful research and, and curing some of the diseases, or at least 
helping you get through it to live a decent life, you know, yeah. and that's basically what, you know, um, as we age. And I think one of the things that I like to help people with is aging in place, you know, if they want to stay in their home. Very and, much so. Yes. And, and, you know, understanding, you know, how their health care will help them to stay in, in their own home. And the research does show when you age in place, you have such a better outcome. You're so much happier. You're, you're actually healthier, believe it or not, even though you're aging in place. Yes. Um, and, it, and, and, and most people want to age in place. They mm-hmm. don't want to go to a nursing home, I mean, or, you know, one of those, one of those places. Yes. And none of, none of us really want to like the idea of going there, but sometimes, you know, especially with like something like Alzheimer's. Mm-hmm you know, when there's a safety concern, you have, you have to, you have to maybe at some point go to, go to a nursing home or somewhere where they can make sure you're safe. Yes. Yes. No yeah, wandering around people. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no getting lost on us. Well, thank you so much for joining thank me. This you. has been a pleasure to speak with you. You as well. And thank you for having me here. Oh, you're <laughs> welcome. And I want to thank our audience. Thank you for joining us on our Women in Wealth series. Again, I'm Regina McCann Hess. I also have an old fashioned phone number <laughs> and it's 484-588-5432. And I'm also on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at Forge Wealth. On LinkedIn, I'm Regina McCann Hess. I hope you come visit us and we will see you on our next Women in Wealth series. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.